So in this video what I'm going to be doing is talking about sequences in a very general idea and then in the next videos I'll be taking a closer look at how we can use lists, tuples, dictionaries as sequences to create some programs and to show you how to use them. So the best way to explain a sequence is to talk about a string. So let me go ahead and create a variable called string and give it some kind of character. So let's just say p python so in this string we have a sequence of characters and all of them together bring makes up a word now this is a valid sequence and with a valid sequence we can do pretty cool things so suppose I want to access maybe the letter P and the letter T so I would do something like string and have my brackets and inside it I would give it the position so I would go one and since t each in the third position, I'd go 3. So when we run this, we don't get anything, but for us to actually see what we have, we have to do it in a print statement. So now when we go ahead and run this, we get y and h. Now we wanted to actually print p and t and not y and h. And the reason is because we actually did 1 and 3 instead of 0 and 2. So now when we run it, we get P and T. So the way this works is, and the reason it's like this is because Python uses index notation. So what index notation is, is rather than starting the count at 1, we would actually start the count at 0. So index-wise, if we were to find out what's the max range, we would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But if we were to get the length of a sequence, we would just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And something to keep in mind is that the last character or an element in a sequence is always the length of the string minus 1. So recall I said that we have 8 in total length, so if I want to access the z, I just go 7, and I would get z. So that's pretty cool. Now what if I wanted to join up characters in a string? I can actually do that. So if I just copy this in here, give it plus, and then do another one, so 2, we run this, and we get pzt. So you can do this as well. Now, one thing to note in this in a sequence, especially in a string, is the this keyword mutable and immutable. So, what that basically means is, suppose I wanted to change the p, okay, suppose I want to change the z into a lowercase z, and I could do something like this. So I'm gonna access the uh, last character and just do maybe change it to t now I run this so we get an error which says str object does not support item assignment so what that basically means is a string is actually immutable which means it cannot be changed once it's been created you can only do a read only kind of thing so view only you cannot edit or make any changes if you did want to make some changes you'd have to create a new variable and do that. So that's just something to keep in mind and we'll see some other data types in the next videos that display the immutability and mutability trait. Now we can also use methods so a method such as len which is short for length to get the length of a string or this variable here so I can do a print statement on it and I run it and I get 8. Keep in mind Everything that you use a variable for, you can also just do this, and you get the same thing. So I should have mentioned that you can just do that, and that will work perfectly fine. It's just a lot easier to have it in a variable and then do it. So another thing you might be using a lot when you're dealing with lists or sequences is the in keyword. So if I wanted to do a print statement, and if I want to check if Python is in python z, I could just do python 
in string. We we'll run it and we get a true. So this is either so this so wherever we have this followed by a string and checking it in a variable, you would get either a true or false value. So if I wanted to check Python z like that, I would get a false. Now the reason is because when you're doing an in check, you have to make sure that the, what you're checking is exactly the same. So now I get a true. Uh, I can also do single characters. So I can do a z and I can do a p and that'll work. But I cannot do a uppercase p and get a true value even though we have a p because it has to be exactly. So this is case sensitive. It's a case sensitive check. So we can also slice strings because they are sequences and create very different outcomes. So let's take a look and how we can actually slice them. So suppose we wanted to just grab a copy of this using the slicing method. So we can do a string followed by the brackets and then a colon. So what this does is it just copies what's in here. And if I print this, you will see that we get the same thing. Now suppose I wanted to maybe just get Python in this whole thing, just Python. I would do zero. And I put a zero in here because the left is inclusive. That means anything you put in left will be included and up till some value here. So if we count a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we run this, we get Python. So the rightmost value is exclusive. Six is this. So it'll get everything before six since we have zero as well. So we can also do this to get the whole thing and suppose you wanted to say reverse this string we could do something like this so this is a quick shortcut to actually reversing the string now notice how we have minus one and we have two colons so i can actually also step when i'm doing this so we have our whole string but suppose i want to get maybe p t o and so on in twos I can do this and I run this and I get pi PTO dash. That's because it includes the first one and then after it's included the first one, it counts twice. So one, two, it includes this, one, and then it includes a uh, O because it's two, one, two, includes dash. Now setting aside positive numbers on the side, we can also have negative numbers. So we can actually do a minus one, which will get the last character and we can do a minus 7 <coughs> which will get the second to last character and suppose we want the last one Oops. And do minus 8 so the way this works is through index notation it goes 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 but when we use negative numbers rather than starting the count from 0 we travel or we traverse the string backwards from negative 8 being the first character, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 being the last character in the string. So that's just something you can keep in mind. And say we wanted to just get P and H using a step as well as negative numbers, we can do minus 1 and then 3, and we get P, H, and a dash because it includes P, which is minus 8, then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, well, 2 and 3 doesn't exist, so it's just going to quit there. We can also just change this to 2 and we get PTO, so it works the same way, so as we would have just positive numbers, you can even do that, and that gets the whole string. So, let me just show you these ones so if you run these whoops as you can see we get well I did go over some of them we get the many different outcomes so there's a lot of combinations when it comes to slicing but these are some of the things you might use and you might want to get to know so that does it for this video I, uh, I've given you a basic overview on how sequences work and in the next video we'll take a closer look at a list data type which acts the same way as a string. It's a sequence, and rather than storing just string characters, we can actually store numbers, words, and pretty much anything you can think of that Python deems valid.